Hey everybody, this is Doug with Artfully Rogue. So, have you ever had one of those projects in the back of your mind that you keep telling yourself, I'm gonna do that when I have time? Well, I've got plenty of them, but I actually made time to do one of them recently, and it's an oversized anvil that's going to be a coffee table. So for this project, I'm actually using some 14 gauge hot rolled sheet that I had laying around the shop. And once I got the first shape, I was able to just kind of trace the opposite side. And now I'm just going to start to put all the pieces together. I knew what size I wanted the top and I kind of had a rough idea how to do the sides. Everything else is going to be, I don't know, kind of fit it as I go. Sometimes it's so hard to take the time and do, say, back burner projects when you own a business and if you're not making money, you're not making money. I mean, unlike working for somebody else where you go in, you clock in, you clock out, you don't have to worry about, you know, whether the business is making money or not, really. But as the owner, you know, you've got to make sure that you know, you're always bringing money in. And so to do projects like this takes away from my time of actually making money. But it's so important for you to be able to take time and do something fun. Not everything has to be in exchange for money. Sometimes it's just about building something to see if you can. We've been very fortunate during this whole pandemic where a lot of businesses have closed down or has seen a decline in their business. We actually saw an incredible increase in our business. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that people were stuck at home and maybe they had a little extra money or they were using some of what the government gave out. Uh, but we saw a huge increase in people doing projects at home. So we stayed busy nonstop. Last August, which would have been 2020, I actually hired my ex-brother-in-law uh, because Vegas had shut down and he was working with Cirque du Soleil. So I hired him to come into the shop. And then my son was kind of in between jobs and was looking to pick up some new skills. So I put him in the shop and hired him and so now I have Robin and Skylar both working in the shop and on occasions my daughter Kylie will come in and do some work in the shop as well. So it's kind of turned into a bit of a family business. They are doing a lot of the paid gigs. We're doing a lot of big water features right now. And so they're doing a lot of those water features, which is actually given me the time to do some of these little projects that I've kind of wanted to get off my back burner. Now I don't actually have a big roller in the shop so for me to create a cone it was easy just to kind of score it and then slowly bend it. Uh, you know in a perfect world it would be nice to do uh, in a roller then you wouldn't have those straight edges but Again, this is more my project. I don't plan on selling this. This is just something I'm going to probably have around the house or put in the office. It's just something I wanted to do for me. So I'm a little bit more forgiving on my projects. And, you know, this is the first one. So if I did make another one, at least now I know where I might do a little different. Size-wise, I really kind of just measured my current coffee table and went with that height which was right around 17 and a half inches and I drew the anvil in a program called SketchUp which is a three-dimensional uh, program and that's kind of how I got the size that I wanted and I can kind of measure off that drawing and figure out how I wanted to build the anvil. This probably took me Oh, about a week off and on. Uh, I definitely wouldn't work on it all day long, but
but I would come in for a few hours, work on the anvil, and then get back onto some paid gigs, or maybe I had to run some errands or, or whatever. So this is gonna be the base, if you haven't figured that out. Um, <clears throat> now it gets a little tricky. So I've got the base, and now I need to kind of balance uh, the top part to the bottom part. And now I've got to figure out these pieces. Um, it's kind of like doing a low poly drawing, where it's all just geometric shapes put together in a certain order. A lot of people are doing sketches, uh, no, I'm sorry, a lot of people are doing sculptures like that right now, which are, kind of look like geometric shapes. So you may have like a horse that's done geometrically or a dog that's done geometrically. And uh, there's a couple programs out there that you can take a, a low poly drawing and then open that up so it becomes flat. And then it just gives you the pieces you need to cut out. So it makes that process very simple, but, you know, to the point where anybody can do it. Uh, you pick the sculpture that you want to do, put it into the program, and flatten it out and cut the pieces and weld it all together. And now this is a good technique if you have to do curved pieces. Uh, taking a piece of paper, using a little bit of spray paint. Uh, now I've got the shape that I need and I'll just cut that out and then transfer that over to a piece of steel. Now I've got a small little piece of steel that's going to go into here. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this paper template is going to help me, you know, figure all that out. Now, because I don't have a great roller, uh, I am actually using 20 gauge for these pieces because they just bend easier. And so I have to kind of be careful where I'm going with the 14 gauge to the 20 gauge. You don't want to blow through the 20 gauge. So I ride high on the thicker metal and then just pull over real quick on the 20 gauge. Now this is where I get myself in trouble. That shirt that I'm wearing is a Leonardo da Vinci uh, Vitruvian Man t-shirt. I picked that up in Italy when I was there recently and I specifically bought this t-shirt so that I could have something to wear outside of the shop. I have a terrible habit of walking into the shop, picking up a grinder or the welder and just start working. So all of my shirts have holes or grind marks in them. And so, yeah, I was about to ruin this brand new t-shirt that I picked up in uh, Italy. So I quickly realized that and then got back into my, my grubbies, my artfully rogue shirts that I buy by the dozen so I can wreck them. So now I'm just grinding everything up. Using my mag drill, I wanna pop a hole from the top down to the bottom. Um, I'm not even sure what you call this part, but it's the square opening in an anvil that you use, I guess, to pound stuff into. Leave a comment down below if you know what that's called. Um, I just know it's a hole in the anvil. Blacksmithing is not something that I've really gotten into. Uh, I did build a forge. I have a video on that I'll put up here in the link. Um, and it worked pretty good but it's not something that I really have taken a lot of time to learn much about. But it does seem like a very, very cool skill to have. I often learn new skills as I need them. So if somebody had a project that required some foraging, um, that's usually when I learn is in the process of kind of on the job training. But sometimes when I have the spare time, you know, I'll break out, you know, something new and, and try to figure it out. And Having the guys in the shop now has kind of given me the time to do more artsy stuff, which is really kind of what I want to do. I want to do more large scale art. And uh, it's just not, that's not going to pay the bills right now. Um, I'm still working on that aspect of my business. So now I put a primer on it, put a uh, coat of gloss paint, and yeah, so there's the anvil.
Okay, I hope that's a project that you enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed that. And if you have any comments, please leave those down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do so now. It does help here on the channel. And I'd like to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, Barry and Marlene Rush, Judy Clothier, John Lettington, and of course, Fun Kiss Artistic Creations. See you in the next video.